Hello, a very warm welcome to the PACUB's latest Packaging Trends webinar. My name is Paul Jenkins. I'm Managing Director of UK Packaging Innovation Consultancy, The PACUB, and I'm absolutely delighted you're able to join us today. So what we will cover in our Sustainable Packaging Innovations uh, webinar is as follows. So we'll have a, a very short uh, section on what the PACUB is and does and our Innovation Zone Packaging Database. We'll then, to put things into context about sustainability, uh, do a very quick uh, overview of the global packaging trends. We'll then cover the standout sustainable packaging innovations that we think you should know. These have all been uh, uploaded and tracked uh, very recently in our Innovation Zone packaging database. So they're all uh, bang up to date and most relevant for you. We're then going to focus on a particular sector, uh, and this one is, is paper bottles. Uh, the reason for this is that we've uh, certainly tracked a significant amount of new initiatives in this area, so we feel it is worthy of further analysis and comment. Uh, and we'll then have details of our next event. So please get your questions in. There is an opportunity in the panel on the Zoom interface to ask any questions, and we will answer them as we go. Uh, you will get a link to this webinar recording post event uh, via email um, and all our webinars, including this one from tomorrow will be uh, are available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash the packup. So the packup is a leading packaging innovation consultancy uh, for areas of uh, packaging support. So we offer technical support and project management uh, for projects large and small, anything to do with packaging and packaging innovation, uh, we should be in a good position to help you. Um, we do uh, events, uh, we'll be at least be used to, and we will be back, uh, as everyone will be, face-to-face uh, -face events and obviously webinars. Um, we do uh, packaging trends reports. So most recently we introduced an, a global packaging trends compendium for this year, but, we, but we've also done reports on sustainable packaging, refillable and reusable packaging, supply guides, uh, etc. And finally, our fourth sort of area is really sort of the heartbeat of the company in terms of what we do and what we understand, and that's our innovation zone uh, packaging database. This is a, a searchable and easy to use uh, resource, uh, nearly 5,000 packaging initiatives that we've collated, uh, works out at 20 new innovations every week uh, and over a thousand a year. These are from concept to in-market launch. So we're not just reflecting uh, packaging innovations found on supermarket shelves, but also those that are still in the development process uh, by universities and the like. Uh, very much a global view. So we're, we're, pack we're, we're tracking innovations um, uh, internationally for, across various different languages. And is a great way of keeping you and your team up to speed to inspire you and create those new ideas. So uh, these are some of the brands, retailers, suppliers, agencies um, that are uh, benefiting from, from membership. Um, I mentioned uh, global packaging trends uh, just a moment ago. Uh, that this is our latest report. Uh, there will be a link in the output that you, when you get an email tomorrow that will give you the opportunity to download uh, a sample of this report to give you a flavor for uh, what is inside. Um, and, and this report, really, the, the nine trends that we've got really just helps us in everything we do, really, uh, in terms of talking about uh, trends is, is to articulate what the sort of uh, what we believe that the nine uh, areas are, uh, the trends areas are at the moment. So uh, they are as follows. Naturally done, uh, everyday engagement, uh, the online surge, uh, all about e-commerce, obviously making life easy about added functionality, getting noticed, that's about sort of pack standout, protect and preserve, that's about uh, sort of uh, preventing food waste really. Um, uh, refill revolution, materially changed and recycling resurgence. Now we're gonna focus on these four uh, areas as part of our sustainable packaging trends summary that we've got today, so naturally done refill revolution, materially changed, and recycling resurgence. So we've got examples, uh, as you would expect, for all four of these. So here are the sustainable packaging innovations we think you should know. Um, as always, um, 
this isn't these aren't an endorsement uh, or examples of best practice. Uh, we're not um, uh, saying that these are the, the best examples in the world, but what we're doing is telling you what is out there and what's happening. And even um, we need to reflect what, what is going on, um, in, in good and bad, really, so, so that you can make judgments in terms of what your packaging strategy should, should be, so you can see what's going on. So, uh, the first area is naturally done. So this is about compostable, biodegradable uh, and sort of bio-based examples. We're seeing lots of those in development and also coming to market. All sorts of challenges still uh, around um, sort of compostable and biodegradable in terms of curbside collection and how uh, consumers deal with these materials. Um, lots of biomaterial development. So we're, we're tracking um, lots of different types of materials uh, coming through the uh, things like sugarcane, but also uh, tomato waste, pasta waste, uh, and lots of different types of types of materials as as people try and find alternatives to um, sort of virgin uh, oil based materials. Um, some cost considerations in terms of how much um, it may cost to implement a uh, an innovation of this type because um, there were there are they, they can be more expensive than traditional methods and it also tends to be at the moment sort of more smaller challenger brands working in this space uh, rather than uh, the big international uh, brand owners as, as, a, as a rule of thumb so the first one is uh, just saying that it's not the big brand owners. Here is an example of a very big brand owner, uh, technology giant Sony uh, playing in this space. So they've announced um, that the business is, 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 is introducing a more, um, what they claim to be a more sustainable material for packing its WF-1000XM4 headphones. Uh, the material is a combination of bamboo, sugarcane fiber, and post-consumer waste paper. So they're combining biomaterials with recycled content. Uh, the bamboo apparently is sourced specifically from three mountains in the Guizhou uh, region of China. And there's a variety that uh, apparently pandas do not eat. So it doesn't affect uh, that important area. With regard to the sugar cane, um, only the pomace, which is stalks, pulp and seeds are used. The addition of waste paper gives the material strength and also its unique appearance. By altering the makeup of the original blended material, as it is called, multiple shapes can be formed, including cases, inner and outer boxes, and protective packaging. The introduction of this new material was part of Sony's ongoing goal to eliminate plastic packaging from newly designed small products. So um, the, the electronics industry is uh, really upping their game in terms of uh, introducing more uh, seemingly more sustainable uh, initiatives. Next up in this natural done trend area is uh, a bioplastic uh, made from popcorn waste. So a German university has developed uh, this bioplastic, which has many of the attributes of polystyrene, but is made from popcorn waste. The researchers at the University of Gottingen uh, were so pleased with the resulting material that they have subsequently patented the process. They have also entered in, into an exclusive exclusivity agreement with German cereal manufacturer Nor, Norka Trader uh, for them to manufacture and sell products made from the new material. The material is comprised of cooked and popped corn, processing waste from cereal production. The waste is then uh, processed so that it has a granular appearance. Uh, then using similar technologies to those used for pr um, processing polystyrene and other plastics, it becomes malleable and can be formed into suitable shapes. The resulting product is water resistant and can be used several times. Being completely natural, once it reaches the end of its useful life, it will apparently biodegrade completely without leaving any residues. Next up is uh, CP Flexible Packaging based in Pennsylvania in the States, and they're claiming uh, an industry first, a coffee industry first, by launching a compostable living film for single use coffee pods um, that have been com confirmed as compostable uh, by BPI, so that's the Biodegradable Products Institute. The film is the only material that works with these new multi pronged technology on the latest generation of coffee makers. The film allows multiple prongs 
to puncture the patent pending film without tearing it. The multiple jets of hot water producing uh, more flavor and aroma. Uh, when used in combination with compostable pods, both components can be commercially composted. So not home composted, but commercially composted, industrially composted. The compostable film uh, meets both ASTM uh, D6400 and ASTM 6868 testing methods as defined by the American Society for Testing and Materials. A San Francisco startup uh, called in Entropic Materials has created a bioplastic that breaks down easily and can be composted at home. Most compostable plastics currently available um, may not be suitable for home composting, as I mentioned, it's some of the challenges they, uh, the industry has and can take uh, can, can take a long time to break down in industrial facilities. Uh, the material really does need the, exactly the right uh, conditions to, to break down efficiently. This means that a lot of industrial recyclers, you know, still refusing to take or are not designed to take compostable plastics at the moment. Entropic materials were set up by a former uh, University of California Berkeley student uh, and is basing the technology on work conducted uh, at the university. This new bioplastic has enzymes built into it so that it had that so once it has served its purpose, the plastic eats itself effectively from the inside out, giving the optimum amount of heat and water. The advantage means that the bioplastic breaks down in days or weeks compared to currently available bioplastics, which can take several months to dark degrade. The company aims to target products that normally can't be recycled, such as plastic films and bags. So that's definitely a one to watch. So that's Entropic Materials from San Francisco. KFC Canada has announced that it will make all of its customer facing packaging home compostable by 2025. The fast food chain uh, will start with a pilot scheme with a compostable bucket later this year. As part of the scheme, KFC have enlisted the Toronto based artist Birani Douglas to design and create an installation uh, with the iconic bucket made completely out of compostable materials. Um, it is claimed that the move to a compostable bucket alongside other measures will divert uh, nearly 200 million packaging items from going to landfill annually, so not an insignificant move. In 2019, KFC Canada removed all plastic straws and bags, resulting in the elimination of about 50 million plastic straws and 10 million bags. And then last year, they moved from plastic to bamboo for their containers. So lots of work going on in that space for KFC Canada. And it'd be interesting to see how the business um, reflects those changes in other core markets. The last naturally done uh, innovation for consideration today is uh, inspired by a spider silk. A team of researchers from the University of Cambridge in the UK have created a 100% plant protein polymer film that they say has functionally on a par with conventional oil based plastics. Spider silk is weight for weight stronger than steel, apparently, and its molecular bonds are weak, meaning it breaks down easily, which the team sought to replicate in its development of the plant based film. The film is made from uh, plant proteins derived from a byproduct of the agricultural industry. Although the material was comparable to conventional plastic, it requires no chemical cross linking which is usually required in biopolymers to achieve strength and flexibility. The example is being moved to a commercial proposition by Exampler, a spin-off company from the University of Cambridge. So Exampler XAMPLA. Uh, they are confident that the production process can be scaled up successfully. After use, the material is said to break down like any natural product, leaving no pollutants. So the next trend area of the four in focus today is materially changed. And this is really um, the, the idea of moving from one material into, uh, into a, a, a more sustainable alternative. Um, what we're mainly tracking is the move from out of plastic to, off, to other often paper-based alternatives. Um, I know, um, Many people uh, would argue about the, the benefits uh, of, to the environment of moving from plastic into paper, uh, but it's certainly something that we are seeing and, and tracking, so reflecting what's going on in the market. Um, 
so without further ado what we've got here is um this is quite an interesting one we've seen lots of work in the shampoo and conditioner market in terms of uh, sustainable or, or more sustainable packaging introductions um so yeah, this one is following in the footsteps of shampoo bars which are an alternative to a liquid based uh, shampoos and this innovation uh, is to come to market uh, is powdered shampoos so there are actually two companies that we track based both based in the new york area who have launched shampoo powders one is a, a startup business uh, called coco foam which you can see the pack there while the other is called meow meow tweet and they have both um uh, offering this, this this new product both products are packaged in paper envelopes uh, the coco foam product is supplied with a small shaker bottle though they the business suggests that any leftover herb or spice shaker would be suitable um some challenges maybe about having uh, a glass pack uh, in in the bathroom and then the health and safety challenges of that I guess you could use a plastic version of that. Um, so yeah, so the coco foam pouches last for about 30 to 40 washes and cost about 12 uh, US dollars. And the Meow Meow Tweets container, uh, which is equivalent to four eight hour, eight ounce liquid, liquid bottles costs 24 US dollars. Colgate Palmolive have announced the launch of a new mouthwash in a new packaging format called Swish. It comes in an impact extruded aluminium bottle instead of the industry standard PET format. The use of aluminium uh, means that the development team countered some issues, one being that the essential oils in the mouthwash initially reacted badly with the internal coating of the bottle resulting in the products having to be reformulated. So changes were required on the line use for the production as the automated unscrambling and feed systems were also causing damage to the surface of the bottle. So these, these challenges were overcome. Um, and the 16 ounce bottle sells for around uh, six US dollars and is available both in store and online. Belgium based uh, brewing giant and innovation zone members uh, AB InBev have been working on their sustainability objectives as, as most and not all brand owners and retailers have with the announcement of the development of the world's lightest long neck beer bottle. They have reduced the weight of their standard beer bottle by nearly 17% from 180 to 150 grams. This results in a reduction of CO2 emissions by 17% per bottle during production. As 50% of the product's carbon footprint is produced by the packaging, AB InBev state that innovations such as this are key to them achieving their long-term sustainability goals. AB InBev claim that if the bottle is introduced across their European production facilities, the annual reduction in CO2 emissions would be the equivalent uh, of taking 62,000 cars uh, off the road. As you would expect, extensive testing uh, has been carried out by, the, by AB InBev in terms of quality and safety before any such innovations uh, can be released to market. This is brand new to our database uh, uploaded uh, only yesterday. So this is uh, French uh, plant food producers, uh, Bonjuel, uh, apologies for my appalling French interpretation, have, have followed some other food and beverage brands um, in the market by, by switching from plastic to a paper-based multi-pack collation. We are spotting this uh, more and more. Uh, we've seen a lot in the beverage sector uh, where, where pl plastic film is being replaced replaced by, by, by paper-based uh, alternatives. Um, the change sees the switch to 100% recyclable cardboard for its range of canned vegetables, uh, which is in line with the company's 100% committed to 100% sustainability movement. Um, the material switch is reported to allow the company to stop using 170 tonnes of plastic per year, uh, a scenario that sees a reduction of 30% less material used. Now, there's a whole conversation about the, the merits or otherwise of moving from plastic to a uh, paper-based solution in this way. Um, we're reflecting what's out there, so you need to know this. Another 
plastic to paper switch is uh, again we're seeing this a lot in the in the beverage sector. Um, most beer brands uh, are working or have done implemented various um, switching from plastic collations into into paper based ones, and this is a uh, another solution, a, a topping solution from KHS Group, their Innopack Kistas CNP, so that's Carlton Nature Packer, is capable of running up to 108,000 cans per hour. The modular system design means that the machines can be added to if required, meaning that brand owners can use alternative materials or even change the pack size. The development is in collaboration with a Smurfit Kappa, who can supply two different types of topper, either fully closed called top clip or an open top version called the green clip. Various multi-pack quantity combinations are available in fours, sixes and eights. The machines are able to handle uh, can volumes between 250 and 580 mil. Design of the can toppers are designed so that no adhesive is required, enabling them, enabling them to be 100% recyclable. Next section, uh, so sort of the third of the fourth uh, sustainable trends area is uh, about refillable and reusable packaging. Now we've tracked uh, a significant increase uh, in the number of uh, initiatives in this area, so much so that it inspired us to uh, commission a report uh, on the sector uh, a few months ago. So um, we're, we're finding uh, lots of different uh, innovations and um, really, if you look at the, uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation's four reuse models, uh, they are refill at home, return from home, uh, refill on the go and return on the go. So that's how you can uh, sort of assess or analyze uh, the four different sort of uh, refill and reusable scenarios. Uh, we're seeing lots of things like uh, dry food, dry food, household and personal care sectors are the ones that are really making uh, the most ground uh, at the moment. Uh, and we're seeing lots of many, so lots of in-store examples uh, with small trials. So, so many, most retailers are uh, trialing uh, and, and, and using pilots as, as a way of testing the water, if you like. Um, but we're starting to see some sort of more extended rollouts. We've got uh, an example uh, from Unilever in a moment, and also uh, the Body Shop have announced that they'd be rolling out uh, a refill station in all of their Body Shop outlets around the world. It's quite an interesting one for, from Nestle. They, the Vital brand actually announced two sustainable packaging innovations uh, at the same time recently, uh, but this one is, is worthy of note because they're using a reusable hard protective case uh, that is designed to hold a 500 mil refill. And you're thinking, well, why would you need um, a, a protective case if you've just got the bottle in the first place? Why don't you just use that? Well, the refills are made of bottles that contain 40% less plastic than their standard 500 mil, mil bottle and have been reduced in weight so as uh, to use as little recycled plastic as possible. This means that the refill is very light and flexible. Um, and almost not fit for purpose without having a protective case effectively. The reusable protective case is required to give the refill pack support and make it easier to drink from. Um, the bottle was developed uh, in Vittel, France uh, at uh, Nestle's Water Research and Development Centre and consumer testing on Vittel Go uh, will start in France and is all, all part of Nestle's wider ambition to reduce the use of virgin plastic by 2025. So uh, this is the first time we've seen an example like this of using a, uh, a lightweighty pack with a protective case, a very highly branded and, and visible one. Um, it'd be interesting to see uh, how that works, uh, what the consumer feedback will be and whether that'll be rolled out further in due course. Now I mentioned in-store re uh, refillable uh, solutions. So this is from Unilever. And they are extending their refill and reuse scheme uh, with, U with uh, UK retailers, um, Asda and Co-op, uh, with, with the launch of an in-store refill system where consumers can collect and return 
already filled stainless steel bottles. Uh, Unilever is including many of their major brands in this initiative uh, being introduced directly into shopping aisles to test how consumers will interact uh, with under otherwise normal shopping circumstances. When the bottles are returned, they will be thoroughly cleaned and then restocked for the next consumer to collect and the cycle continues. French uh, organic uh, fast food chain BioBurger uh, have collaborated with um, fast growing Uber Eats um, to, uh, to, to trial a packaging deposit system. The pilot will be conducted from two of Bioburger's uh, Paris restaurants, Bioburger Victor and Bioburger Batinolles. Uh, on placing orders with the restaurants, uh, the customers uh, have, will have two packaging options, the already available biodegradable choice or the new deposit system as shown here. The reusable packaging will be offered uh, for a, a combination of burger fries and drink option, uh, for a month. If the customer chooses the returnable option, they will be charged a deposit of four euros, which is, this is very common in, in, the, in the food services uh, to, to, for, for the consumer, the shopper to, to be charged a deposit. Um, it ensures that the product gets returned and, and there's a little bit of a financial commitment uh, from the side of the consumer. Um, the, the, the deposit will be refunded when the customer returns the packaging to the restaurant. Uh, the intention of the trial uh, is for BioBurger and uh, Uber Eats to um, obviously to gauge uh, consumer interest uh, in reusable packaging. If successful, uh, the intention is to find solutions to scale up the operation uh, by analysing the economic, regulatory and operational challenges needed to make the process feasible. It is not clear whether uh, the packaging is recycled once it comes to the end of its useful life. But that's an important uh, consideration for uh, reusable packaging is that it also has a sustainable end of life scenario. Now, consumers have been recycling glass of wine and beer bottles uh, for many years. It was really the first uh, widely recyclable uh, pack format uh, out there. Um, but maybe there's another way of delivering sustainability in the sector. What we have here is a New Jersey based wine company, Gotham Project, and is trialing a reusable wine bottle scheme with a, a number of retailers and restaurants in uh, the US cities of New York, Massachusetts, and uh, Colorado. Um, the bottles have a return and reuse embossed on them and are sealed with corks, but no foils. As part of the scheme, the consumers can use an app to either receive a refund or donate an amount to charity. Researchers determined many years ago that the largest part of the carbon footprint of a wine, a bottle of wine, was the manufacture and transportation of the glass bottle itself. Uh, it is estimated that in the US, over 3 billion wine bottles go to landfill, don't even get recycled. So only 30% of them actually get recycled. So Gotham Project uh, have been uh, importing wine from Europe but for some time in uh, 24,000 litre hermetically sealed flexi tanks, uh, which they then decant into smaller uh, stainless steel tanks before filling kegs, cans and bottles. So that's quite an interesting uh, change. So it is, um, it's best practice to uh, reuse bottles rather than recycle. Now, um, Loop, part of sort of TerraCycle's uh, refill, uh, refillable initiative have been very active over the last two or three years with a number of initiatives in several countries. Um, the latest sort of pack format to, to get the reusable treatment is from Shell uh, and they've collaborated with design agency uh, JDO to introduce a returnable uh, two-piece stainless steel can for lubricants uh, for the French market. Uh, the can has been created as a, a modern and contemporary design whilst indicating uh, sort of a positive sustainability, sustainability move from Shell. Uh, one difficulty faced when designing this innovation was the traditional through handle used for uh, engine loop containers, which could not be retained due to difficulties in cleaning or reuse. This was overcome by carving a curved area into the bottle, as you can see, where it can then be held whilst pouring. The pack can be used around 100 times before needing to be disposed of 
and is obviously cleaned between uses. Now, one of the challenges of uh, reusable packaging is, you know, in order for the numbers to work from an environmental point of view, that the packs need to be uh, reused uh, a number of times. This, this pack could be used 100 times. Uh, but for some consumers, you could argue uh, that might sort of stay in the garage or cupboard uh, for, uh, for a few months or even a number of, you know, up to a year or two. So um, that might undermine its, uh, the, the refillable, uh, the reusable efficacy in terms of the bottle not getting reused uh, enough uh, over the years. Time will tell. Now, we just love the, the, the shelf standout appeal of this uh, aquatic inspired refillable bottle. Um, independent design agency Pearl Fisher have launched a, a proposition, proposition called Love Ocean, a project which aims to address the disposable nature uh, of children's bath products. The, the new signature bottle is being used as part of a refill and reuse subscription service. So the Love Ocean bottle is made entirely uh, using 100% post-consumer recycled HDPE. Uh, the bottle immediately catches the eye on the shelf, as I said, with the, the use of a whale's uh, tail design for the cap. Consumers can order reusable product pouches that are delivered directly to people's doors and after use sent back to Love Ocean for cleaning and subsequent reuse. It is reported that Love Ocean has partnered uh, with a Vancouver-based social enterprise Plastic Bank to fund the removal of the equivalent of one kilogram of ocean-bound plastic for every bottle sold. So I think with refillable and reusable packaging, you have more of a permission to try different pack formats because the pack will be reused. If this was a single use, you'd think, why, why go to the extravagance of a, of a whale's tail for cap? Uh, but I think if it's being reused a number of times, then perhaps you have more permission to do that. Right, the last re, uh, the last trend area is um, uh, recycling resurgence. Uh, recycling is the uh, is is a massive area, as 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 you would expect and and, and understand. This is about um, uh, improving recyclability of, of, of packaging, but also including uh, recycle increased recycled content in in in, in, in packs. We've got lots of external factors influencing the changes here. Uh, we've got, for example, we've got packaging taxes coming in or in implementation around the world. Um, the UK packaging, uh, plastic packaging tax comes in uh, April next year, uh, which will see a, a levy uh, on plastic packaging with less than 30% 30 30 recycled content. We've also got uh, the plastic packs around the world, which is uh, one of the, um, which all, seemingly all have a, a 2025 uh, end date uh, for, uh, it's part of it is 100% recycled uh, plastic packaging. So lots of brands and retailers and suppliers are consequently working uh, in, in that area. So we've got five or six innovations to show you here. So uh, the first one is from a uh, German sauce and uh, condiment maker, Heller, who have moved their classic spiced ketchup range, as well as other products, including Fruit Up and uh, Vers Wunder into a completely recyclable tube, courtesy of EPL packaging. The Platina Pro 250 tube is manufactured from HDPE. Uh, the complex manufacturing process produces a high oxygen barrier uh, which reportedly comes close to the high barrier of conventional aluminium barrier laminate structures. The UPL tube um, is required to match the same shelf life as conventional materials. Uh, for the tube's decoration, Heller decided on a nine color uh, flexographic print combined with a, a matte lacquer. The, the packs have also been approved uh, for the US market uh, by the Association of Post-Consumer Plastic Recyclers, APR, uh, the relevant uh, American industry body. Next up is an uh, initiative from uh, German chemical and consumer goods producer and Innovation Zone members, Henkel, and they've launched a, a new um, Summit Excellence 4-in-1 uh, dishwasher caps. And the caps are made from a combination of cardboard and plastic, and they use caps supplied by another Innovation Zone member, Grainer, 
uh, which contains 50% post-consumer recycled polypropylene. Additionally, the CAPS use a patent system of tear-off separation to make recycling easier for consumers. Another grain of packaging uh, innovation, this time in the in mold labeling uh, field, uh, decorative pots that have been designed to be recycled with other polypropylene products. The, bots, the pots are made uh, with a, a new product supplied Borealis, um, who are a leading supplier of, uh, of, of material, plastic, uh, plastic materials, um, based in Vienna, Austria. The new material known as uh, Bore Newables is manufactured using waste products such as from vegetable oil production, uh, the timber and food production industries. Using cooking oil is one of the waste products utilized in this way. The resulting material is said to offer the same physical characteristics as fossil waste materials, but with a substantially reduced carbon footprint. Now, parent, uh, uh, Lucas Aid have, um, have announced an investment of six million uh, pounds in a move to add recycling prompts to its bottles to increase awareness that their bottles can be recycled easily. This is to encourage greater recycling of their bottles, obviously. At the same time, a redesign uh, will reduce uh, the size uh, of the label, as you can see here, and it and, and really doesn't impact uh, on the, on the, in my opinion, on the on the on the sort of the branding and the shelf impact that the, that the bottle may have. And it has been calculated that the reduction will lower the use of virgin plastic by three and a half thousand tonnes per annum, thereby reducing carbon footprint by 9,000 tonnes. Also for the Lucasade sports drinks, 100% recycled bottles with smaller plastic sleeves will be introduced, followed by recyclable alternatives uh, to their silicon valve uh, in the cap next year. So uh, that's an important uh, uh, initiative as well. UK supermarket chain uh, Waitrose and also Innovation Zone members are trialling a new strawberry punnet uh, with sustainability very much the motivation for the change. Um, the new punnet will be available on a trial basis initially uh, called Airlight. Uh, it is a reduced in weight compared to standard punnets and has a redesigned base to cushion the strawberries. This redesigned base means that the unrecyclable uh, bubble wrap, which uh, is seen in many of these packs of this type, plus the adhesive to stick to the base, have been removed. Waitrose have calculated that this will save a total of nearly 17 tonnes over the summer season. The planet is also comprised of 80% recycled material, and the trial will be carried out on, on two of uh, two core Waitrose strawberry products. Um, the new planet has been developed in partnership with Berry Gardens, um, uh, innovations are members as well, and Sharpak. And if the trial is deemed a success, it will be used much more widely next season. Now, the last trend uh, example, uh, and before we, 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 we have a, a quick look at uh, paper bottles, is, um, is, a, is, is a Swedish initiative from Arla uh, Dairies, and they're moving to 100% recycled format for their butter based spread. Uh, the main body of the pack is moving to polypropylene with a, a board outer, both of which are widely recycled in the Swedish market. Uh, the board outer is made from uh, FSC certified board. The outer is designed to be easily torn off and removed from the polypropylene uh, in a container. The CO2 impact reduction is claimed to be around 30%. The change will be seen uh, on the 600 gram pack of Brego, um, a pack size that sells apparently 40 million uh, packs a year. Arla's plan for 2021 is to reduce the amount of virgin plastic used by a further 260 tonnes. Okay, so let's have a look at paper bottles. As I said at the beginning of uh, in my introduction, we decided to do a little bit of a focus on this because basically because we're just seeing a lot more innovations in this area. And we just thought it was worthy of consideration here. And I think we've got six uh, to, to, to go through. So the first one is from the uh, Indian market. Uh, Kagzi is an Indian packaging company motivated uh, very much about uh, producing more environmentally focused packaging solutions. Uh, the business has launched what is claimed to be India's first 100% compostable pulp bottle manufactured from waste paper. Uh, the, the pulp is molded into two halves, which are coated 
with an impermeable solution, uh, and they don't say what that that solution is, uh, which is, uh, but is also compostable. The two halves are then hot pressed to form uh, the bottle. Uh, a specially designed tapered cork is then added with a paper label to hold the cork in place. Kakazi's manufacturing partner is Insignia Projects, based uh, in, also in India, who makes the pulp bottle halves. The shelf life of the bottles is said to be six months, and ex anticipated uses for the bottles include toiletry products such as liquid soap, shampoos, and lotions. And as you can see from uh, the visual we've shown here, um, this is still uh, at the development stage. So we will be tracking and following this with, with great interest to see uh, if and when it does uh, enter the Indian market. Now we mentioned Fatel earlier, and I said that there was two. There were two uh, recent sustainable packaging innovations from the Mineral Water brand, and here is the other, which is uh, the first hybrid water bottle introduction, called the Eco Bottle. It has been developed with manufacturing provider Jabil Packaging Solutions and is a combination of recycled plastic and recycled board. Thanks to the board surrounding the bottle, um, the amount of plastic used is reduced by more than 50% compared to current Vitel one litre uh, PET bottles on the market. Separation of the board from the bottle is via a patent pending tear strip, enabling easily easy recycling. Composition of the bottle of the format is 80% recycled paperboard and 20% recycled plastic. Now it's quite interesting that um, there have been other initiatives of a, of a similar type, and certainly there was some uh, comments, if you like, that um, uh, there was quite a lot of plastic uh, in, in still in the bottle. Um, but by but by calling it a, a hybrid water bottle solution, they are being very uh, upfront about the fact that this isn't just a paper solution. It is claimed that due to the, the nesting properties of the bottle, the number of trucks required for delivery can be reduced by up to 60%. So 60%. The trials will begin across Europe and will be introduced uh, to the media during Tour de France uh, this summer. In what is claimed to be a world first, Unilever is launching a paper-based laundry detergent bottle for the Brazil market. Uh, the bottle was developed with the Pulpex Consortium, which we've uh, tracked quite extensively in the Innovation Zone, uh, where Unilever, along with Diageo, Venture Management Specialist, Pilot Light, and GlaxoSmithKline are also members. The bottle will be sold under Unilever's Omo brand and Purcell Skip and Breeze in other parts of the world. The bottle is made from sustainably sourced pulp and can be recycled in normal paper waste streams. The bottles are sprayed internally with a coating that repels water, which enables the bottle to cope with liquids such as detergents, shampoo, and conditioners. Rigorous testing is required, and Unilever is running a number of trials to assess the performance of the bottle through the supply chain, as well as other adverse conditions such as damp environments. Now, the first 100% biodegradable pack in Portugal has been launched uh, by Agua de Monchinique. Uh, in collaboration with um, a number of different companies and the University of Minho. Called the Good Bottle, um, the mineral water bottle is said to achieve a biodegradability rate of 74% at a 45-day uh, stage based um, on various uh, considerations and 90% biodegradability after 12 months uh, using the EN 13432 standard. The composition of the good bottle is comprised of algae, which during its decomposition can serve as a food for marine animals, although this does imply that the bottle uh, may not be disposed of in the right way. Um, so there's a, a consumer messaging challenge, uh, in my opinion, uh, for this particular solution. Um, the lid is also made from the same material, um, so uh, obviously has the same biodegradable properties. The Good Bottle follows uh, another launch of 100% recycled bottle earlier this year, uh, which that in itself contributed to a saving of 100 tonnes of virgin PET. 
Now, Castrol, uh, which is a, a UK oil and lubricants brand, has announced uh, a partnership with, again, with Pulpex, uh, whose technology, technology uses wood pulp from 100% uh, re renewable raw materials to make sustainable packaging. Uh, one of Castrol's, Castrol's goals uh, as part of their PATH 360 sustainability initiative is to reduce the use of plastic by 50% by 2030. They have also they are also looking globally to become more sustainable by reducing waste carbon emissions and improving living conditions. So Castrol are the latest major company to join the Polpex consortium I've previously mentioned. Um, uh, the, the carbon footprint of pulp compared to glass, uh, Polpex uh, calculated a 90% improvement and 30% against PET whilst also removing plastic from the environment. So the last innovation uh, of today's session. Um, so you, some of you will have noted uh, last year, uh, in fact, we, we, we talked about this on one of our webinars uh, last year, Absolute Vodka uh, trialed 2000 prototype paper-based bottles in the Swedish and UK markets as an initial assessment of the viability of paper as an alternative to glass beverage packaging. And the makeup of the prototypes uh, were 57, 57% paper and 43% recycled plastic, with plastic being utilized uh, as a barrier layer. The business is now looking at uh, uh, bio-based barrier coatings with a view to removing the plastic element. I mean, this is a bit of a, a stumbling block uh, for, a, for a paper bottle solution that is uh, nearly half plastic. So they're working hard to come up with a bio-based barrier coating. Uh, they have now announced that they are trialing bio-based barrier coatings in the neck area of the bottles with the potential to use this coating throughout the whole bottle if successful. Absolute state that they have managed to integrate the barrier coating directly into the paper layer, meaning much less barrier material is required, whilst also making the manufacturing process much simpler. So there we have it. So uh, of the the, the paper bottle solutions, I think what is uh, common in, 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 in the six that we've shown is that they really are still at the sort of development prototyping sort of pilot stage where small volumes are being introduced and trialed and tested to really uh, to see if this is um, a long term viable option uh, in terms of um, paper bottles as a, as a solution, but very interesting to uh, to acknowledge and note uh, what's going on in the in, in this market. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, our next webinar, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a. Uh, we, we won't be having a summer break, but we we, we acknowledge that um, the summer season uh, is upon us, and those of the those of them of you that are lucky enough to actually go on vacation. And have some time off um, will maybe impact on on the numbers of people we get for our webinars. So uh, to cut a long story short, we will be taking a bit of a break, but we will be back on Thursday, the second of September at three pm UK time. Um, as always, all our events uh, information is available on our website. Um, uh, as I said at the beginning, we will be sending out uh, information uh, and a video recording uh, of this webinar. Uh, to everyone registered uh, tomorrow and will be online uh, to, to view as well on YouTube. Um, and I also I mentioned about our global packaging trends. Don't forget that you'll be the opportunity to download uh, a free sample of that as well. So um, I'd just like to thank you all very much for your attention today and uh, look forward to seeing you at a future uh, pack up webinar in due course. Thank you. <laughs>